Hello and welcome back to my favorite crafty things for 2020. I know this is dragging out into 2021, but I was waiting for some products to get back in stock. I know companies are struggling right now, so I kind of delayed these last few. Well, in this video, I will be sharing with you my favorite papers and envelopes. Now, many of these are products that you've seen me use over the years, but I do have some other things to share with you. I really put a lot of effort into explaining why I feel certain types of products are important to use for card making, so I hope you'll give this a watch. Now let's start with paper first. I think this is an incredibly important topic as the paper, of course, is the base of our card making. And it really makes a big difference in our stamping, our die cutting, and the final result of our card. I feel it's best to first talk about heavyweight cardstock and what makes a cardstock heavyweight because there's a lot of confusion out there. So I'll first explain the difference between different heavyweight cardstocks and then talk about my different favorites. Not all heavyweight cardstocks are equal, and it doesn't mean they have to be expensive. I have some inexpensive options too, but it really makes a big difference to consider everything about the quality of the paper, not just the pounds, the weight of it. To demonstrate this, I have two white cardstocks from the same company, Nina, which makes great quality cardstock, and they're both 110 pound. However, they're very different because of other properties of the paper. So you can't just consider if it's a white cardstock and it's 110 pound. There's more to it. I have two here. The top one is Nina Classic Crest Solar White, the one that I really, really like and I've been using for many years. The one below that is Nina Exact Index. It's also white, but it's index. So the classic crest on the top is a cover weight, kind of like the cover for a report. And the index, exact index, is kind of like an index card. It's much thinner, but they are both 110 pound. Just for easy reference, I put a smiley face on the one that I use for card making. Now I put a sad face on the other, which I really shouldn't have done because I use that card stuck a lot for organization. So the top one, the Nina Classic Crest Cover Weight, Solar White, I use for card making. The one below that, the Exact Index, I use for organization and kids projects, things like that. As I mentioned, both of these are 110 pounds, which most crafters think of as a great weight for card making. However, there are other differences. First of all, I do need to change these stacks of cardstock. The pack on the top has 125 sheets. The pack on the bottom has 250 sheets. What I'm going to do, just so we can compare two equal stacks, is take out 125 sheets from the bottom pack. So we'll end up with two reams of cardstock here that are 125 sheets so you can compare them and see a difference in the thickness. So you can see the classic crest on the top is much thicker than the ones on the bottom. So it's 125 sheets of both, but the stack of the classic crest is much thicker. That means each sheet of cardstock is much thicker. So that's one visual comparison. But let me tell you why there is a difference between these. It's not just the pounds that you need to consider with cardstock. There's also a number called GSM. This is the number that will help tell you if a card stock will be a thicker card stock. So the classic crest is 297 GSM. The exact index is only 199 GSM. So that's making a difference between these 210 pound card stocks. Now I do want to mention the classic crest cover card stock at the top. That isn't readily available in office supply stores or Walmart and places like that. I get my Nina Classic Crest Solar White online and I'll provide some links below. Many stamp companies or um, scrapbook stores carry this cardstock. The reason crafters like that top one, the Classic Crest Solar White, is because it is very heavyweight and it is very smooth and it's great for stamping, Copic markers, ink blending, and so on. So that's why you see a lot of people use it and why I've used it for many years. Now the one on the bottom, the exact index, it's still a nice cardstock. It's thinner, but I use it for organization. So like in my stamp pockets, I put a white cardstock insert. I use that because it's thinner. So I save the Classic Crest Solar White for my stamping and card making, and then the index I use for other things. So you can see a difference there. Those are both 125 sheets. You can tell the Classic Crest Solar White is much thicker. It's a huge difference. 
There's also a little bit of a color difference between these two, which will be hard to see in the video. But to me, the Classic Crest Solar White is more of a true white, whereas the White Index has more of a gray tint to it. Uh, so that's something that I really notice, but it may not make a difference to you. But it adds into the other factors that make that Classic Crest Solar White better for stamping and card making. I have a few more demonstrations to show you the difference. Here I'm scoring both of those pieces of cardstock in half. Now when you score your heavier weight cardstock, I would do a double score line. So watch, I'll run the scoring tool twice down the center of it. This is my classic crest. That way I can be sure to have a good score line. My scoring tool is small, so I have to rotate it and score from the other side in order to get a score line across the whole thing. Now when you fold this, make sure you go from valley to mountain. So notice I folded my paper back. That way you will not get any cracking with the heavyweight cardstock if you score it correctly and then fold it correctly. Now I'm cutting both of these in half to create note cards. This is how I make my top folding note cards. Now there is another big difference between these when you make a card with them. So I have the two note cards here and I'm putting a stack of about eight post-it notes on the front of each of them. That just represents, you know, some embellishments and layers of cardstock on the front of a note card. I'm just putting weight on there for the demonstration. Now I have the two different types of note cards here. So on the left is the Classic Crest Solar White. On the right is the Exact Index. This is a huge thing for me. The Exact Index, which is thinner, is a very floppy card. When you open it, it just flops. Whereas the Classic Crest Solar White, which is heavier weight, is a more sturdy card. And when I spend a lot of time on a card, I want it to be nice quality. Another thing is, is when you stand up a thinner weight cardstock note card, it kind of slides flatter. So it doesn't display as nice either. So here I'll go ahead and lay them, stand them up and watch. It just slides down. And this is why I really recommend a heavyweight cardstock for a card base. I do have a less expensive option, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Now, I'm not going to go through ink blending and stamping and coloring on these cardstocks. I did a comparison in my video in the past, one of my other My Favorite Crafty Things videos. I will link to it here if you want to see that also. But it shows how the Classic Crest Solar White is nice and smooth and great for stamping and inking. Next, I wanted to talk a bit about that inexpensive heavyweight white cardstock that you've been seeing me use for some things in videos. I don't use it for everything. I'll talk about that in a moment. One of my blog readers told me about this last year and I've been using it ever since and I'm really impressed. It's the Accent Opal Digital Cardstock, which I refer to as the inexpensive heavyweight white cardstock. Now there are things that I like about this cardstock, but I don't use it for everything. So let's make a comparison. They're both cover weight. The accent is actually 120 pounds, whereas the classic crest on the bottom is 110. Now there again is a difference in the number of sheets. The accent up there has 150 sheets. The Nina classic crest has 125. So I'm gonna take some out of the accent so we have an equal comparison here. So we have two reams of cardstock with the same amount. Now let's look at that number, that GSM number that makes a big difference in the thickness of the cardstock. So the accent GSM is 325. Now the classic crest is 297. Both of these are very high numbers, little bit of difference. So the accent cardstock is actually a heavier weight than the Nina classic crest solar white. So let's do a comparison. Both of these stacks is 125 sheets and you can see the accent's a little bit thicker. Not a huge difference, but a bit thicker. Now the accent is a great height heavyweight cardstock. It's nice and smooth. However, I find that I like stamping and ink blending and coloring more on the Classic Crest, the Nina. That's why you see me use it mostly. But that accent is much cheaper. So it's great for card bases and it's great for die cutting or just where you need white cardstock without stamping. Again, there is a slight color difference. I find the solar white to be a little more true white, whereas the accent looks a little more gray, kind of like before. It's subtle, but to me, it is a big difference. So that's something I also keep in mind. So for me, I use accent for building layers. I use it for card bases if I'm covering most of the front of the card. And I use it for when I'm doing stacked die cuts. 
But anytime I'm doing stamping or inking or have like a white panel on a card, I use the Nina Classic Crest. Now I know some people use accent for their stamping and so on. Give it a try. It may work for you and it is definitely a good option for card bases. So here you see me do a double score on each sheet of cardstock, fold it and then cut it in half and we have our card bases. Let's again demonstrate having a card with lots of embellishments on the front and you'll see that both of these hold up just fine. So this is a great option for a card base. So those are really the two card stocks, the white card stocks I use mainly for card making. I've got a few others, but I wanted to show a comparison so you could understand the difference. Okay, now another important thing, if you're making card bases, get yourself a um, scoring board and a bone folder. These are the two that I like to use. By getting a good score line, you can avoid any kind of cracking in your paper, even with really, really heavyweight cardstock. So that's just another tip for you. Now there are a few other cardstocks that I use for other things in the craft room, and I'll talk about that. The first one is Brutus Monroe's Not Your Mama's Cardstock. This is a luscious cardstock. It is 130 pounds, super smooth, great for ink blending. So when I do a card where the focus is really on the stamping, and it's like a one layer kind of thing, and I wanna do Copic coloring and all that, this is the one that I reach for. So you can do a lot of that and it won't show through. So it's great for card bases too, a beautiful card stock. So I use that sometimes and I do mention that when I do in the videos. Now quickly, I just wanted to show you, I get this cardstock pre-cut. I either pre-cut it myself or I take it to a FedEx Kinkos. But I have these little square cubes in my cabinet where I have pre-folded Nina Classic Crest Solar White note cards top fold and I also have some side fold ones there. I need to make some more. I also have pre-cut pieces. I have them cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and then some a little bit smaller and those are both the Nina 110 pound classic crust solar white. Then I also have in here my pre-cut Brutus Moreau not your mama cardstock because that is so fun to ink. And then I do actually have some Nina Classic Crest Solar White in 80 pound in case I just want a lighter weight cardstock for something. Also in here, I have my Accent cardstock. Now I only really use that, as I mentioned, for card bases and die cutting. So you'll see I have Accent top folding and side folding note cards. And then I also have some pieces pre-cut to four and a quarter by five and a half so I can quickly take it when I want to do some die cutting. The reason I don't use accent cardstock for all my card bases is if I use some of the white Nina Classic Crest Solar White for inking or stamping on my card, it won't match the note card. That's how much of a color difference I see from it. So in that case, I would like to use the Nina Classic Crest Solar White, which I use more. But if I'm covering the front of the card with colored cardstock or something, I reach for the accent. And I can feel a difference between the two, so it's easy to not get them mixed up. Okay, now let's move on to some other cardstocks. There's one last white cardstock that I do use, and it's from Tim Holtz. It's Distress Heavy Stock. It also comes in craft. This is a very heavyweight cardstock. It's 130 pounds, super thick. This is great when you want to do a lot of altering with inks and paints and water and so on. It's super smooth, so it's wonderful for ink blending. It was really designed for all of the distress line. So I save this stuff, it's gold to me. I save this for when I wanna do a lot of fun distress techniques or layer up inks or add water and not worry about warping. So I encourage you to check this out. It's a great one too. For watercolor paper, I have always liked the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper. The reason, it's bright white. I like bright white cardstocks and other watercolor papers are often not true white. I also like that one side has a very smooth finish and the other side has a texture, so you have the choice. I also like that it's available in four and a quarter by five and a half inch pieces or full sheets. Now, I am not a watercolor expert, but when I do any kind of inking techniques with water, this is what I reach for. In fact, I donated the rest of my watercolor papers, and this is what I like. For vellums, I really only use one nowadays, and it's the Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum. The reason I like it, one side has a pearlescent shine to it, the other side looks like re regular vellum. 
So the nice thing is it's two in one. You could use either side. It's also nice quality and it's nice and thick. So I can use it for all of my card making needs. There are a few specialty card stocks I wanted to mention. And the first is the Tim Holtz Black Matte Alcohol Ink Card Stock. Now you can use this with alcohol ink, but I use it a lot for black die cuts. So say I have a word die cut that I'm doing in black as a focal point of my card. This is what I reach for a lot of the time. It is super dark black. It die cuts nicely and it has this matte smooth finish, which is unlike anything I've ever seen. It almost has like a suede like touch to it. So whenever I need a focal point die cut word sentiment, I use this and you've probably seen me do it a lot in videos. Sometimes I use it for cardstock strips, like if I want to white heat emboss on a black cardstock strip, but I rarely use it for larger pieces. I'll talk about that black cardstock later. Next up, I have two specialty cardstocks from Aaron Lee Creative. The first is the Black Glossy. That's another one that I've been using a lot for die cut words on my cards. It has a nice shine to it. So instead of having to put like glossy accents on it to make it stand out, this is an easy alternative. It die cuts very easily. You could even fold it and make a note card from it. The back side is white. So the inside of the note card would be white. I just compared it there to the Tim Holtz black and you can see it's very nice dark black. Now the first holographic cardstock I ever used was from Aaron Lee Creative and it's the one I always go back to. It's a great basic holographic cardstock. There are many specialty ones now. She even has a rainbow one, but this one is the one that I reach for. The reason is it adds this fun shine to my cards, especially with small word die cuts or like a little matte, and it picks up whatever color you have around it. You could also make a card base from it if you want, since the other side is white. Keep in mind these specialty card stocks are great with embossing folders. Check out what this looks like. It makes me want to go to Epcot, but it creates so much shine and texture, so much fun. So it gives more life to your embossing folders too. I thought I'd give you a peek in my cabinet where I keep some of these specialty card stocks pre-cut and ready to go. Here I have Tim Holtz Yupo paper. Love that for alcohol ink. Next to it, I have some pieces of Aaron Lee Creative Holographic Cardstock and Black Glossy. I need to pre-cut more of that and replenish this stash. Same with the Tim Holtz Watercolor Paper. That is all pre-cut and ready to go. Next to that, we have the Tim Holtz Matte Black Alcoholic Cardstock. You can see I keep my scraps in there too, so none of it goes to waste. And that's what I'll reach for for die cutting. In 2020, I also fell in love with the Memory Box Glitter Paper Pads. The reason? The colors. The colors are beautiful. There are light colors, rich colors, uh, bold colors, anything you could want. There are also frosted glitters that have a little bit less sparkle to them, a little more subtle. These also don't rub off. The glitter doesn't rub off of the paper and it die cuts wonderfully. So I often use small pieces of these for die cutting words or adding a strip of cardstock with a little bit of sparkle. So I highly recommend these great quality, lots of beautiful colors. I especially like this Christmas one because it has silver, a few shades of gold, and even like a champagne color to it. So I encourage you to check these out if you're looking for easy to die cut glitter paper. All right, this next product isn't really from 2020. I'm cheating a bit. Came out at the beginning of 2021, but I wanted to include it because I think it's such a great product. I've been using it a lot off screen and I'm crazy about it. And I do have it coming in a video very soon. But these are paper pads from Memory Box, six by six. There are 48 sheets in a pack. There are four of each color. There are four families with three shades, light, medium, and dark. So there are a lot of colors in here. Now with card stocks, you're kind of limited by what card stocks go together nicely. Since these are printed, you really get true colors and the nice light, medium and dark that work together very well. So these are colored on both sides, but they have a white core, which is fun because you can do fun embossing folder and sanding techniques. It die cuts beautifully. And that's what I've used it mostly for is die cutting. Now it is like a lighter weight cardstock, I guess you would say. So I wouldn't be using this for card base. It's not big enough anyways, 
but it is great for building up layers and die cutting. There are colors in here that I don't have in regular cardstocks, many of them, so that's why I'm really liking them. I keep mine all together like this in a clear box, which I'll link to below, and I have dividers that I made by laminating cardstock. I'll talk about that in an organization video soon. But I have a little sleeve in here where I keep all my little scraps for each of the different paper pads so that I can be sure to use up even the tiniest bit. That way, when I want to make a card where all the colors go together beautifully, I can reach for this box. I also created little color swatches. Instead of die cutting little tags, I just cut them now into little rectangles. It's so much faster. Cut these into two inch by three inch rectangles, punched a hole in the top corner, and there I can easily see the different colors in each pad. Thought I'd give you a closer look at how these work. So you have the light, medium, and dark that go together, and there are four different families of colors. Such a beautiful collection. So if you really are a color person and really like to match those up on your card, this is a great option. Okay, let's talk about regular card stocks. The first one is actually from 2021 again, but it's so good I had to include it. This is the new Spellbinders cardstock. I have used it quite a bit and I have it coming in video soon and the colors are wonderful. The reason I like it, they have many colors. They even have multicolor packs, which is always a big hit. And they are nice quality. I found they die cut beautifully, great selection of colors. Here I'm gonna fan it out so you can, can get a closer look at all the colors. And all of the colors are great, but there are a few that really stood out to me as being different. I really like the four teal colors that go together, the light all the way up to the dark. I like this green that has a little yellow tint, great for building a rainbow. The beeswax, it's the perfect yellow. It's just a beautiful butter yellow. Then there is this really soft barely peach, which will be great for an alternative to white. The wild berry is a really nice color, as is the dahlia. The black is nice and black, but I really like the graphite, which is a dark gray. I think that's a nice alternative to black. And then the browns. I will say browns are hard for me. It's hard to find good ones. This one right here, this is like the color of craft paper, but without the variation in it. So it's a nice regular cardstock. So there you can see all these different shades. If you're looking for cardstock to try out, this is a good option because they have those variety packs too. I just placed a big order for more of this. I was running low because I only had a few sheets of each, so you'll be seeing more in videos. Okay, now for the other color cardstocks that you see me use in videos a lot. First of all, we have Hero Arts. That's the blue one there. Hero Arts has a nice selection of colors. Heavyweight, beautiful colors. I will talk about my particular favorite of theirs a little bit later, but that is one cardstock I reach for a lot. The other that I use too is Tailored Expressions. The reason I like that is there are many colors in their collection and you can get variety packs there too. And they also have envelopes. The cardstock that I use the most by far is the Gina K Designs. The reason I like Gina K cardstocks is the colors are beautiful the envelopes match, which I'll show you later, and their inks match too, and it's like a really good match, which is something that just makes crafting easier. And then finally, Lawn Fawn. I like Lawn Fawn cardstock because the colors are pretty, and you can get it at many different stores, not just on the Lawn Fawn site. All right, so any kind of co colored cardstock that you get from a stamp store online, so like Lawn Fawn or Gina K or Tailored Expressions or Hero Arts, my favorite thing, Simon Says Stamp, those will all be heavyweight colored cardstocks. If you go to one of the big chain stores, it may say 110 pound, but still be lighter, as I mentioned earlier. These all have a high pound and GSM, so they're nice heavyweight cardstock that would work great for card bases too. Now there is one line of cardstock that is lighter weight that I'm crazy about, and that is the Concord and Ninth cardstock. I think it's 80 pounds, so it's a little bit thinner than the others, but I love the colors that they have. There are some really unique colors like the Sprout, I love this color, and they have inks to match. Now even though it's lighter weight, I still use it quite a bit 
It's great for layering, brilliant for die cutting. You can do die cut inlay techniques really easily with it. So I use this a lot on my cards. I just don't usually use it as a card base. However, if I do want to use this as a card base, I just make it like a regular note card, but I do one thing. I add a little white insert on the inside. So the white cardstock is cut to a little bit smaller, so it's about four by five and a quarter, and I glue that on the inside. That gives the back of the note card some strength, so it's not a floppy note card as we talked about earlier. So if you have any lighter weight cardstock, I encourage you to do this, to put a little bit of extra in the back, that extra piece of cardstock. It looks nice too, that's where you can write your personal message, and it gives your card some strength. So I really like that Concord and Ninth. I encourage you to check out their colors. Okay, now there are a few particular colors of cardstock that I use a lot and I thought I would mention. I think it's nice to have a light gray cardstock to use as an alter alternate to white or when you're doing bold colors, you want like a nice soft background. The three that I like are the Simon Says Stamp Fog, the Lawn Fawn Fog, and the Gina K Metallic Silver. That's white up there on the top to compare to. The Simon Says Stamp Fog is a little warm. The Lawn, Fog, Lawn Fawn Fog is a little bit cooler. And the Gina K Metallic Silver has a metallic shine to it. These are all great for a nice soft backdrop. You could also use it as a shadow on a white die cut. It's just a nice basic base color to have in your stash. Okay, a lot of people ask about the darkest best black cardstock, and for me, it's Hero Arts Pitch Black cardstock. This Hero Arts Pitch Black cardstock is super dark, it's super heavyweight, and it's what I reach for for card bases, for die cutting anything. Now, I mentioned two specialty black cardstocks earlier. I use that for die cutting too, but whenever I need just basic black cardstock, this is my go to. Of all the cardstocks I've looked at, this is definitely the darkest and heaviest weight and best quality. Okay, next let's talk about envelopes. Now, for me, I spend a lot of time and money and effort and energy and thought to put a card together. So I like to put it in a nice envelope. I know there are many inexpensive thin envelopes out there, but I find thicker, higher quality envelopes last through the mail better and also look better. But it really is a personal choice. You can buy bulk envelopes online, but I tend to buy envelopes from the crafting companies that are high quality, beautiful colors, and often match the card stocks or inks they provide. So let me show you a few of the different ones that I reach for often. I use more than any other envelope, the Gina K Designs envelopes. I like the square flap, they're nice quality, and they match their card stocks and inks. It's a perfect match. I'll compare the Lucky Clover card stock to the envelope so you can see. For me, I really enjoy having a envelope that matches my card. Another line of envelopes I use often is Simon Says Stamp. Now they offer many different types. So there are the regular envelopes that are squared. There are some that have a metallic shine to it, like this one, I love that one. And then they also have some V-flap envelopes. So you can check out all the different options that they have. Some of the envelopes match their card stocks. They even have some specialty ones. They have vellum envelopes and so on. So big collection over there that you can check out. I also lately have been using more tailored expressions envelopes because they have a big color selection and some other size envelopes, which I'll show you in a moment. I prefer the square flap over a V flap just because I can stamp along it easy or add a sticker, but it's nice to have the different options out there. And again, if you want to stick with a basic inexpensive white envelope, that is awesome too. I still do that in some cases, but color envelopes sure are fun. Now there is another option. You can make your own envelope. There are envelope tools making tools out there. I struggle with those. I find them a little cumbersome. So I really like the Simon Says Stamp envelope die. Here are some envelopes that I made actually using two different papers together on one envelope. It's fun to make your own because then it can really match your card. But not everybody wants to take the time to do that. I know I don't all the time, but that is an option if you like to create your own. Now lately folks have been enjoying mini slimline cards and slimline cards. Let's first talk about the mini. That's my favorite size. Mini slimline cards are usually three and a half by six inches or close to that. 
For an envelope, I like to use the tailored expressions mini slimline envelopes. They come in beautiful colors. I think they have a variety pack, or you can buy them in individual color packs. Now, if you want an interesting mini slimline envelope, you can also try Simon Says Stamp. They have a side flap mini slimline. So it's nice to have a unique envelope like this where your card slides in the side. It's also fun to make your own mini slimline card. I like using dies, as I mentioned, to make my envelopes. I find it easy to do. And the new Simon Says Stamp mini slimline envelope actually from 2021 again, but I really like it and I used it in my last video and I'll use it again soon. It's fun because uh, you can make your own mini slimline envelope out of whatever pattern papers you have. So it's fun to create something that's a fun match. Now it's very easy to make a mini slimline card. So if you want a three and a half by six inch card, you can make it side folding by cutting seven inches by six inches and scoring it down the middle. But if you want a top fold mini slimline, which is 12 inches when you open it, can't really cut that from eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. Uh, Tailored Expressions does sell these pre-cut and folded mini slimline cards with the top fold. So if you're like me and like top fold cards, it's nice to buy these pre-cut if you don't have 12 by 12 cardstock to make your own. Okay, next up for the larger slimline card, which is usually around three and a half inches by eight and a half inches, there are many different colored envelopes that I like. These first ones here are from My Favorite Things. They have a rainbow pack available and they also have white and they're nice quality. Also from Simon Says Stamp, check this out, there's the side flap version. So you could have either style for a slimline card. Keep in mind the slimline envelopes are just like a letter envelope or one that you would mail a bill in. So if you have those, those work, but generally they're not as cute as these. And if you're making a handmade card, it's fun to have the nice envelope to go with it. And if you're just looking for a variety pack of some fun colors for slimline card envelopes, the Cat Scrappiness uh, Slimline Envelope Set is a great option too. So you can see lots of beautiful colors here. I don't make slimline cards that much, so one or two packs of these will last me quite some time. Okay, now let's talk about storing your cards or mailing them. Now after I complete a card, I put them in a clear card sleeve just to protect them. I can reuse these over and over again, so when I need a card, I take it out of the sleeve, mail it, and then I have the empty sleeve ready for the next card. It's just a nice way to take your completed card and your envelope and keep them together and ready to go. Another thing that I know some people do is they put their card in their envelope and then put the envelope in the card sleeve and mail it that way. They just put a white sticker label with the address on the front and the postage and then take it to the post office. This is great because it protects your card in the mail from water or getting wet or rain. I don't normally mail my cards this way, but I know many people do. Now the way I mail my cards 90% of the time are in these white card mailers. They're the perfect size. My friend Andy told me about these and they add a little protection to your cards. Now my cards are normally very layered and bulky. So I find putting them in something is much better option than mailing in regular envelope. So I put my card in the pretty envelope, put it in this mailer and that's how I send them. It costs a little bit more money for postage but that way I can be sure that the card I spent a lot of time on makes it there okay. You could even put your card in a sleeve and then put in this if you really want extra protection. The price of these is very reasonable and for me it's worth it to make sure the card gets there in good shape. Now these aren't foolproof, they're not that thick, it just adds a little more protection. Again, uh, the postage increase on this is just a bit, I think, I think usually it's about 70 cents or so to mail this in the US. But what I recommend doing and what I always do is I go up to the lady or man at the post office and have them put the postage on it. That way it can be hand canceled, you have it right. And every post office seems to be a little bit different on what they charge for different packages. So always try multiple. I have a favorite here in town and that's the one we usually go to. Okay, there you have it. A rundown of most of my favorite papers and envelopes from 2020 and a little bit from 2021 also. I hope this information was helpful to you. 
I do link to everything I talk about, including the videos, below in my YouTube description. But I really encourage you to go over to my blog where I'll have a lot more information and links for you. If you're interested, you can check out the rest of my favorite Crafty Things series. Here in the middle, I have a couple more to share with you, and I will try to get those done as soon as possible. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.